Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing the chain rule still under the differential calculus course. So this rule is another rule in deriving some functions in the um, in the differential calculus. So if we have this function y is equivalent to function of u or f of u and u is equivalent to g of x, then dy over dx or the derivative of y or the y prime is equivalent to the derivative of y with respect to u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. So if we also have the function equivalent to f of u and u is equivalent to g of x and x is equivalent to k of z, so we have now the derivative of our y with respect to z and that is equivalent to derivative of y with respect to du, derivative of du with respect to dx, derivative of dx with respect to dz. So again, if you look at this, in finding the dy over dx, um, multiplying dy over du and du over dx will just give us the dy over dx. So same as here in dy over dz, if um, multiplying dy over du, du over dx, and dx over dz, this will just give us the equivalent dy over dz. So that is one way of um, solving our differential calculus or deriving our function. This is what we call the chain rule. So perhaps meaning to say you have to derive y first in terms of u and then after you find the derivative of y with respect to u, you have to derive the u with respect to x. So now let's try to have some examples here and we need to find the first derivative of the following. So we have y this is our function, y is equivalent to 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 raised to 5. So eventually, chain rule is used for functions or equations that are that has complicated um, exponents or big exponents in which will give us a hard time in expanding our polynomial, just like this one. Since our, our exponent is raised to 5, so meaning to say you also have to multiply multiply this one by itself five times in which that will take us too long to multiply. So now let's just use the chain rule in order for us to solve this one um, as easy as possible. So let's say our u is equivalent to 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. So we let this one inside the parenthesis as our u. So that being said, our y now our y is equivalent to u raised to 5, right? That's safe to say. Now, again, the derivative, to find the derivative of y with respect to x, we need to find the derivative of y with respect to u, multiply it with the derivative of u with respect to x. So now, let's find the derivative of y with respect to u first. So this one will be dy with respect to du. So we have 5u raised to 4. Now for the du with respect to dx, we have this as our u. So our, our du now with respect to x will be equivalent to 6x. So again, this is our u. 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Derivative of 3x, 3x squared is 6x plus the derivative of 4x, which is 4, and the derivative of 5, which is equivalent to 0. So basically, this is now our dy over du and du over dx. So getting our dy over dx, or the derivative of our y, so we have now, we have to multiply now our dy and over du, which is this one. So we have 5u raised to 4, multiply that, with our du over dx, which is 6x plus 4. And since u has a value, so we need to replace or substitute the real value or the original value of our u, which is 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. And that is raised to the fourth times 6x plus 4. 
So this one can be multiplied by 5. So we have 5 times 6, that, that's 30x. Plus 5 times 4, that is 20. And then we need to multiply that with 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 raised to the fourth. Simplifying this one, since there's a common term between 30 and 20, so we have 10, 3 times x plus 2 multiplied by 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 raised to 4. So this is now our final answer. So another example that we have here is to still find the first derivative of the function y is equivalent to 3x cubed minus 2x squared raised to 1 third. So as you can see, our exponent is quite complicated. So in order for us to solve this easily, see, we, we can just use the chain rule. So again, letting the these values inside our parentheses as our u. So we have u is equivalent to 3x cubed minus 2x squared and then we can our y we need to say our y is equivalent to u raised to one third so now deriving our y with respect to u we have one third u raised to one third minus one that is equivalent to negative two thirds and then this one will be deriving our u with respect to x so we have 3 times 3, that is 9x squared, minus 4x. So this is now our derivatives. So now in order for us to find our dy over dx, so we need to multiply our dy over du, which is 1 third, u raised to negative 2 thirds, and our du over dx, which is 9x squared minus 4x. So now we can um, substitute the, the, the original value of our u, which is 3x cubed minus 2x squared, this one. So let's just substitute that first. We have 3x cubed minus 2x squared raised to negative 2 thirds multiplied by 9x squared minus 4x. So now we can simplify this one since this has a power of negative, meaning to say we can put that in the denominator. So we'll have 3x cubed minus 2x squared raised to 2 thirds. And this one has a power of 1, meaning to say this is positive. So we can put that in our um, numerator. So we have 9x squared minus 4x. And we have one third here, so we have one here, one, and we have the three here. So simplifying, we have, um, it has a common value, which is x, so we can simplify x, and, and then we have nine x squared minus four. And for the denominator, we have three times three x cubed minus two x squared, raised to two-thirds. So this is now our final answer. Next example we have here, find the first derivative of y is equivalent to 3t plus 1 raised to one-half times 2t minus 1 raised to one-third. So as you can see, this is, um, this is a product of two terms. So we can say that this one or that this one is our u and this one is also our v. So in product rule, we have the product rule u dv plus v du. So um, again, we have our u, which is equivalent to 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. Our v is equivalent to 2t minus 1 raised to 1 third. So deriving our u with respect to dt or with respect to t. So we have 1 half 3t plus 1 raised to negative 1 half because 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And multiply that by the derivative of this, which is 3. Now for the dv with respect to the derivative of t or with respect to t, so we have 1 third times 2t minus 1, 1 third minus 1, that is negative 
2 thirds, so we have negative 2 thirds times the derivative of our u, which is 2. Or the derivative of our vm, sorry, so that is 2. So simplifying, we have 3 halves, 3t plus 1 raised to negative 1 half. This one will be, the dv over dt will be 2 thirds times 2t minus 1 raised to negative 2 thirds. So we can now find our y prime or dy over dt. So we have u, again that's u dv plus v du. So copying our u which is 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half and the derivative of our v which is 2 thirds 2t minus 1 raised to negative 2 thirds plus our v which is 2t minus 1 raised to 1 third multiplied by the derivative of u which is 3 halves 3t plus 1 raised to negative 1 half. Now simplifying our equation we can normalize this and since this is positive exponent, so we can put that at the numerator, raised to 1 half. And we have the 2 thirds here, so we left the 2 here in our numerator and we'll have 3 here in our denominator because this is negative. So we have 2t minus 1 raised to positive 2 thirds and the other one will be 3 times 2t minus 1 raised to 1 third. Again, we have the 3 here and this is positive. So that's in our numerator. And our denominator is 2, 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. Now, simplifying the fraction into one fraction, we can multiply the denominator and cross multiply the numerator. So we have um, the denominator will be multiplied. So 3 times 2, that is 6. And then copying this one, sorry, that should be minus, raised to 2 thirds. And we have the 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. Now for the numerator, we need to cross multiply this and add them together. So 2, 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half multiplied by 2, 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half plus 3 times 2t minus 1 raised to 1 third multiplied by 3, this one, 3 times 2t minus 1 raised to 2 thirds. So we have 2 times 2, this one, 2 times 2, that is 4, times 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half times 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. That is just equivalent to 3t plus 1. The other one will be 3 times 3, so we have 9. 2t minus 1 raised to 1 third times 2t minus 1 raised to 2 thirds. That is just equivalent to 2t minus 1 because 1 third plus the 2 thirds will be equivalent to 1. Copying the denominator, we have 6 times 2t minus 1 raised to 2 thirds, 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. And then simplifying our numerator, since we can still simplify that, just have it, have it here. So 4 times 3t, that is 12t. 4 times 1, that is 4. 9 times 2t, that is 18t. And 9 times negative 1, that is negative 9. Divided by copying the denominator, we have 6 times 2t minus 1 raised to 2 thirds and 3t plus 1 plus 1 raised to 1 half. 
Then again, we can simplify our numerator 12t plus 18t, that is 30t. 4 minus 9, that is equivalent to negative 5. So copying again the denominator, we have 6 times 2t minus 1 raised to 2 thirds times 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. So our numerator can still be factored because there's a common term. So we have 5, 6t minus 1 all over copying the denominator. We have 6 times 2t minus 1 raised to 2 thirds times 3t plus 1 raised to 1 half. So this is now our final answer. So it's a quite long um, equation or quite long solution. So we now have our last example, which is z is equivalent to square root of t, I mean square root of 1 plus square root of t all over 1 minus square root of t. So let's say this one, um, the, the values inside the square root will be our w. So let's just take that as our w. So we have 1 plus square root of t all over 1 minus square root of t. So since this is in fraction form, so we can have our numerator as our u and our denominator as our v. So that is the quotient rule. So we have the v du minus u dv all over v squared, right? So now, um, deriving this one with respect to t, deriving our w with respect to t, so we have copying the v, we have 1 minus square root of t multiplied by the, the, the derivative of our u, which is 1 over 2 square root of t. So again, this is applying the radical rule of the, uh, of the derivative of square root of t minus our u, which is 1 plus square root of t multiplied by the derivative of our v, which is negative 2 square root of t. So dividing that by the square of the denominators, we have 1 minus square root of t squared. So simplifying, we have um, 1 minus 2 uh, minus square root of t times this one. So we have 1 minus square root of t all over 2 square root of t. We also have negative times negative, so this is positive, so we'll have plus 1 plus square root of t multiplied or divided by 2 square root of t all over our denominator, which is 1 minus square root of t squared. So simplifying our numerator, we'll have um, combining our fraction, we have 2 square root of t as our denominator, we also have 1 minus square root of t plus 1 plus square root of t, since they have the same denominator. So negative square root of t plus square root of t is just equivalent to 0. So that being said, um, we still have our denominator. I forgot. We have 1 minus square root of t squared. So that being said, 1 plus 1, that is 2 over 2 square root of t divided by our denominator, which is 1 minus square root of t, that is squared. 2 divided by 2, that is 1. So we have our denominator, our fraction now is equivalent to 1 over square root of t, and then multiplying so, so that we can divide our fraction, we can multiply by the inverse or the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 1 over 1 minus square root of t squared. So that gives us 1 over square root of t times 1 minus square root of t squared. So this is now our dw over dt or derivative of w with respect to t. So afterwards, that is still the inside or the, the equation inside. So we still need to find our z. 
or the derivative of our z. And our z is equivalent to w raised to 1 half, right? So now, deriving our z with respect to w, we have 1 half w raised to negative 1 half. Substituting the, the value or the original value of our w, which is 1 half 1 plus square root of t all over 1 minus square root of t raised to negative 1 half. And then, since our dz over dt should be equivalent to dz over dt times I mean, dw, we need to multiply that with dw times d or, or over dt. And our dw over dt is equivalent to 1 over square root of t times 1 minus square root of t raised to 2. So, meaning to say this one now is our dz over dt. Now, simplifying this, we have, you have to note that, note that y is equivalent to a over b, that is raised to negative one half, is just equivalent to b over a raised to one half. So, this one, we can just invert that this one, the denominator will become our numerator, and the and the exponent will be positive. So we have 1 half 1 minus square root of t all over 1 plus square root of t raised to 1 half multiplied by 1 over square root of t times 1 minus square root of t raised to 2. So, simplifying, we have 1 over 2 square root of t because we can multiply 1 half here. And then we have 1 minus square root of t raised squared. And then we have square root of this one, 1 minus square root of t over 1 plus square root of t. So, this is now our final answer. So I hope you learned something from this video and I'll see you on the next videos.